Hello students, welcome to the lecture on food service planning and design and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the concept development, explain the customer survey and feasibility study, define the community geographies, explain the regulation and law of food service, define the different food service carriers. Let's start with the concept of food service planning and design. Building plans are a graphical representation of what a building will look like after construction. They are used by builders and contractors to construct buildings of all kinds. Building plans are also useful when it comes to estimating how much a project will cost and preparing project budgets. The creation of a set of building plans starts when an owner or developer approaches an architect with an idea for a new building. The architect issues a proposal for his services based on the type of project and the owner's description. The cost for building plans typically ranges from 3 to 5 percent of the total cost of the project. Once the owner signs a contract with the architect, the design phase begins. On larger projects, the design process goes through several distinct phases. It starts with a semantic phase where the architect captures the basic information about the project and creates simple floor plans to reflect this information. After the owner reviews these drawings, the architect proceeds with a more detailed set called the design development phase. This process continues through a 50% drawing phase, a 90% drawing phase and a final construction set. After each set of building plans is created, the owner is given a review period and his commands are incorporated into the next phase. Let us now discuss the concept development. Investing in a food service business is a high risk investment. It is also well known that 80% of the individuals who open a food service operation today find themselves out of business in a year. How can so many people fail at making a profit? and find themselves out of business. This explores the reason why 80% of owners fail and more importantly, why 20% succeed. The steps in developing a food service concept are discussed here. Developing a concept. The concept is the foundation that contributes to building a profitable food service operation. The concept includes more than the type of cuisine to be served and the type of atmosphere. It is defined as a matrix of the owner's business philosophy and operational procedures, customer survey and community geographies, financial feasibility plans, strategic advertising, management goals and objectives. The concept becomes the strategic business plan which acts as a blueprint for what needs to be accomplished. An owner's philosophical approach. How a person design a concept depends on his or her philosophical approach about getting into business. There are two fundamental entrepreneur approaches, both involve owners who invest time and money. First type will be labeled Investor A and the second Investor B. Investor A is a person who enters the food service industry solely for a maximum profit to be returned on his or her financial investment ROI. Type A. Primary investment goal is maximum return on investment. Selection of style and type of food service concept are secondary. It's not an active owner in daily operation, low sweat equity. It's not an expert in food service system. It's a financial expert. Analyzes a customer survey, feasibility study and financial strategic plans. Type B. Primary investment goal is maximum return on investment. Selection of style and type of food service concepts are very important. It's active in the daily operation, high sweat equity. It's an expert in food service system. It's not a financial expert. Does not analyze a customer's survey, feasibility study and financial strategic plans. Why owners failed people who fail within the first year of their business do so due to a lack of knowledge in one or all of these areas, finance, management and foods. The ultimate reason for closing a business is not making enough money, sales or revenue to pay the bills. How does a person get into this situation? An individual might begin a business underestimating the capital needed. At times, owner mismanage people. The inexperienced owner will hire friends or family members, thinking that a great friendship makes for a great working relationship. This rarely works, as it is difficult to take orders from and to 
friends or family members. Many owners have difficulty saying no to the employees or not saying yes often enough. This usually results in employees taking advantage of or constantly fighting with the owner. In either scenario, a negative attitude emerges in the service sector resulting in the loss of customers. A lack of understanding of foods and food service system is a third area that causes food service operators to fail. The great taste of food is the number one reason customers patronize a food service operation. The owner must have knowledge of ordering, purchasing, receiving, storing, preparing, producing and serving foods as well as a working knowledge of health and sanitation courts or laws. Owners who do not know how to implement controls on food and beverages operate at a high food cost and are more apt to serve an inconsistent quality of food to customer. Selecting a food service concept category. The food service segment can be classified into one of two categories, quick service or full service, family restaurant, dinner houses or dining establishment. Quick service concept represent food service operation that need to generate a high volume of sales due to low check averages. Check average is the amount of money a customer spends for a meal. Customer survey and feasibility study. A customer survey is used to study the market a food service operation will target. A feasibility study is a customer survey that includes additional information about the community. It is essential to both complete and understand these studies in order to maximize profits. Although both surveys are not required, they are highly recommended. Remember that about 80% of the people who jump right into the food service business are unemployed at the end of the year. Elements of a customer survey Customer surveys study the demographic statistic of potential customer. There are four key demographic factors. Number one, age. Number two, gender. Number three, occupation. And number four, income. Age. Age generally indicates the amount of social, work and life experiences a person had. A 20-year-old customer has different demands than a 60-year-old customer. The 20-year-old desire food, beverages and a style of music, dining room decor, menu prices and portion sizes that are not the same as those of a 60-year-old customer. Both customers have different views on education, work experiences, disposal income, dietary needs and family. Gender, knowledge of whether market is predominantly male or female will aid in choosing the types of cuisine, portion sizes, the balancing of calories and the nutritional elements on the menu as well as the decor. Occupation, the type of work market does throughout the day will help to establish guidelines concerning menu selection and portion sizes. If we are feeding people who do a lot of physical work, the food items and portion sizes should be here too. Customers who are doing less physical work may prefer a food section that has fewer calories and smaller portion. Income. Knowing the customer's income bracket assists in determining the selling price on the menu and in forecasting annual sales. The targeted customer must have enough disposal income to support the proposed check average. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the community geographies. One of the most important decisions an owner makes is where to locate a food service operation. A prime location will greatly increase the visibility of the operation. High visibility will increase customer count sales due to impulse diners. Impulse diners are people who base their decision to dine at a food service operation on the taste of the food and the location of the food service operation. High visibility also reduces advertising expenses. In researching factual data about a community, collect current information on the geographic region and on the neighborhood in which the food service establishment will be located. Health information includes population growth, economic growth, financial stability, unemployment rate, type of industries, commercial tax rates, prime interest rates, real estate values, zoning, regulation, building codes, state board of health codes, Highway and road development, public services offered, potential sales generation, crime rate, school system, purveyors and competition. Population growth. Population growth determines if the population is growing, declining or maintaining its current number. If there is a great decline, examine why people are moving away. 
in a small community. The customer base may be too small to support the food service operation, but in a large city, a small decline may not greatly affect the customer base. Highway and Road Development in surveying the community and the exact neighborhood where the food service operation may be located, map out roads that are under construction and those that will soon be under construction. Find out the community's plans for road repairs and sewer development. Also note where one-way streets, stop signs, reduce speed limits and traffic lights are located. People will avoid food service operation that they find difficult to get to. Food service operation located on two-way street have higher sales than food service operation located on one-way streets. School systems. A large number of schools in a community indicate a stable customer base. Communities that have numerous schools have a lot of children, which usually indicates a lot of families. Most of these families will also own their own houses. People who own their houses usually have a more difficult time just picking up and leaving town. Communities with numerous schools are positive indicators in selecting a family-style food service concept. Purveyors Research the types of purveyors where they are located and the services they offer. Get to know these people, not just their telephone numbers and prices. Select purveyors who are willing to build a long-term business relationship with a food service owner. When analyzing research data, make sure that there are more positive indicators than negatives before locating a food service concept in a particular community. There is no scientific method or magical formula that indicates how to become an instant success. There are many financial successful food service operators who can teach us how to become successful. All of them have worked hard and have learned by their mistakes. Successful food service operators understand the importance of planning and implementing food and beverage cost controls and financial controls. They also know how to manage people. Welcome to my restaurant. Today we will be talking about food safety. As a professional cook I find that some people don't know about food safety. The most important part of the meal, besides taste, is the fact that you don't want to get sick from the meal. Let's visit your kitchen. How to store food, knowing temperature zones of a fridge is an important part of food safety. Your refrigerator may not be quite as big as mine, but a lot of the same concepts do apply. What you may not realize is that the temperature in your refrigerator can vary anywhere from 35 degrees all the way up to 59. Now, a safe handling temperature for food is 40 degrees. So 59 can be a little scary but it is safe if you put the proper things in the right place in the fridge. So, for that 59 degree area, which is going to be the door of your fridge, you're going to want to store things like mustards, ketchups, fruit juices, and things like that. Now the one exception here is going to be your eggs and your butter. If the top part of your refrigerator door has a closing plastic lid, that's going to hold that temperature in. Hot air rises. We all realize that, so the warmest part of your fridge is going to be on top. Avoid putting milk or dairy products on the top shelf. They stay fresher on the bottom. The coldest part of your fridge is going to be that bottom shelf, just above your doors and that's going to be for storing meats. One of the key points that many people may not realize is overstuffing your refrigerator can really cause a lot of problems. In order to keep things cold in there, it's really based on circulation, such as blood flows through the veins. The air must do the same. If you stuff things in too compactly, you're not going to be able to get that circulation needed. So the items kept in the middle of your fridge may not be kept at that 40 degree mark or below. That's going to turn into basically spoilage, and, a lot of wasted money, and, a lot of headaches on your part. Foods that need refrigeration should be placed in the refrigerator within two hours after eating to help prevent bacteria growth. If the ambient temperature is more than 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that time safety zone shrinks to one hour. Don't violate this rule. Well thank you for allowing me into your home. It is very important to remember the rule when in doubt throw it out. Have a great day, and, until next time. Bon appetit. Let us now know some of the regulations and laws. 
The FSS Act 2006 provides for consolidation of laws relating to food and to establish the food safety and standards. Authority of India for laying down science-based standards for articles of food and to regulate their manufacture, storage, distribution, sale and import to ensure availability of safe and wholesome food for human consumption. Some of the salient features of the Act are movement from multi-level and multi-department control to a single line of command, FSSAI as a single reference point for all matters relating to food safety and standards, regulation and enforcement. Integrated response to strategic issues like novel foods, health foods, nutraceuticals, GM foods, international trade, etc. Decentralization of licensing for manufacture of food products. Achieve high degree of consumer confidence in quality and safety of food. Effective, transparent and accountable regulatory framework within which the industry can work efficiently. Investor-friendly regulatory Mechanism with emphasis on self-regulations and capacity building. Emphasis on gradual shift from regulatory regime to self-compliance. Consistency between domestic and international food policy measures without reducing safeguards to public health and consumer protection. Adequate information dissemination on food to enable consumer to make informed choices. Administrative setup at state level. Enforcement of the Act would be through the State Commissioner of Food Safety, CFS, and his officers, namely Designated Officer, Food Safety Officer, and Panchayati Raj or Municipal Bodies. It is also proposed that Food Analyst, Chief Food Analyst, and Joint Director may be posted at district level, zonal level, and state level offices in rotations with their posting in the laboratory. These officers will act as coordinators between enforcement officers and laboratory. These officers will assist Food Safety Commissioner in identification food laboratories and research institution for testing and calibration or any other accreditation agency to be notified by the Food Authority for the purpose of carrying out analysis of samples. Functions, duties and responsibilities of food safety. Regulators. Function of the Commissioner, Section 30. The Commissioner of the Food Safety shall not be below the rank of the Commissioner and Secretary to the State Government. Prohibit in public health interest, manufacture, storage, distribution or sale of any article of food in the whole of the state within a maximum time of one year. Survey of the industrial units engaged in the process of manufacture of food in that state for compliance organize and conduct training programs for the personnel of the office of the commissioner and on a wider scale different segments of food chain for generating awareness on food safety. Ensure an efficient and uniform implementation of the standard and the other requirements and also ensure a high degree of objectivity, accountability, practicability, transparency and credibility. Function of the designated officer section 36 shall be a whole time officer not below the rank of subdivisional officer or equivalent appointment shall be done by commissioner of food safety and each district will have at least one designated officer who has the power to issue or cancel license prohibit sale of any article of food in contravention with the provisions of the act and the rules receive report and samples of articles from food safety officer under his jurisdiction and get them analyzed Recommended cases to Commissioner for sanction to launch prosecution in case the contravention is punishable with imprisonment. Sanction or launch prosecution in case of contravention punishable with fine or recommendation. The case to Commissioners for punishment with imprisonment. Maintain record of all inceptions made by food safety officer and the action taken by them, etc. Functions of Food Safety Officer, Section 38. A full-time officer having a degree in food or dairy technology, agricultural science or veterinary sciences or biochemistry or microbiology or degree in science or chemistry as one of the subject from a recognized university or possess any other qualification notified by the central government or is a graduate in medicine and has received training in food safety, sampling and surveillance or has successfully completed the training for a specified period in food safety, food inspection and sampling under an institute or institution approved for the purpose by the food authority. Major functions are as follows. 
seize any article of food in contravention of the act or rules and may keep the same in the safe custody of the FBO after taking the sample and send the same seize any article of food in contravention of the act or rules and may keep the same in the safe custody of the FBO after taking the sample and send the same to food analyst of the local area for analysis and report generation. He may require the FBO to execute a bond for a sum of money equal to the value of the article seized with one or more sureties as he deems fit. And to inspect any place of food manufacturing, storing for sale or storing for manufacture of any other article of food or exhibited for sale and where any adulterant is manufactured or stored and take samples for analysis. If the article is of perishable nature and the FSO feels that it is unfit for human consumption, he can after giving notice in writing to the FBO destroy the same. Inceptions of a premise shall follow as far as possible. Provisions of Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 relating to search are inceptioned by a police officer executing a search warrant issued under the code. To inspect as frequently as prescribed by the designated officer all food establishment having license for manufacture, handling, packing or selling of food within area of his jurisdiction. Licensing and Registration under the Article 31 of FSS Act 2006, Food Safety and Standards Licensing, Registration of Food Businesses, Regulation 2009, lays down licensing and registration conditions which are compulsory for any food business. Any person desirous to commence or carry on any food business shall make an application to grant of a license to the designated officer along with fees in case a license is not issued within two months from the date of making the completed application or his application is not rejected. The applicant may start his food business after expiry of the set period. When it comes to safety, two things are critical. The first is helping people when something bad happens. The second is preventing future problems. The FDA Food Safety Modernization Act, or FSMA, is aimed at modernizing our food safety system in the U.S. and preventing problems before they occur. The last major update to our food safety laws was back in 1938, and a lot has changed since then. Our food now often travels more than we do. It arrives from farms and facilities across town or around the world, on trains, ships, and trucks. At the same time, pathogens are changing, adapting, and sometimes becoming stronger and harder to defeat. And people are living longer, and with chronic disease, making them more susceptible to foodborne illness. For these reasons, we need a food safety system for the 21st century. At any point from farm to table, pathogens such as Salmonella, E. coli, or Listeria can catch a ride and spread to virtually any food. Each year in the U.S., about 3,000 people die, and one in six become ill due to foodborne illness. Outbreaks have been linked to all sorts of foods, from spinach and cantaloupes, to soft cheese, peanut butter, and eggs, to name a few. When it comes to food safety, everyone has a responsibility. We cannot let our guard down. The FDA's job under FSMA is to set new food safety standards and to make sure they are met. The focus of the new law is on building in prevention throughout our food safety system, and that includes foods both produced in the United States and entering our country. For example, it calls on farmers to take steps to prevent hazards when growing or harvesting fruits and vegetables based on known safety risks. These hazards may include animals entering the fields, workers with poor hygiene, manure, or water with pathogens. For facilities that produce food and animal feed, the new law requires processors to identify, implement, and monitor preventive controls, such as controlling temperature during the cooking process that can significantly minimize or prevent hazards. The concept of preventive controls actually originated with a few industry leaders, but through this law, it will become the norm. Further, foods enter our country from around the world. The sheer volume we import means, while inspection at the border is still important, 
food safety verification needs to happen before foods are shipped. FSMA provides rules for importers who will now be responsible for verifying the food safety activities of foreign suppliers. These and other elements of FSMA work together to prevent problems in our food system. In addition, FSMA gives the FDA additional tools for protecting the public. This includes, for the first time, mandatory recall authority and the ability to keep suspect food from being shipped. FSMA represents a sweeping change in food safety, and the FDA can't do it alone. Industry, government agencies at the national, state, and local level, and the public all play a role in preventing foodborne illness. Learn more at F
Let us now discuss some of the trends in the food industry. The food service industry incorporates some of the largest and most profitable businesses in the world. The public relies on the knowledge and skills of food service workers to provide them with safe, tasty food. There are many different types of food service carriers available, including kitchen workers, wait staff, administrative personnel, and restaurant managers. Many people enjoy food service carrier as waiters, cafeteria, workers, and restaurant attendants. Waiters and waitresses take customers' orders, relay them to cooks and chefs, bring out food when it is ready. Cafeteria workers might be employed by schools, prisons, hospitals or office building to prepare and serve large quantities of food. Restaurant attendants typically set tables, assist waiters with serving food and clean up after customers have left. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Building plans may consist of a single drawing or hundreds of pages. During the bidding process, contractors and subcontractors review the plans and submit their price to complete the work. The concept is the foundation that contributes to building a profitable food service operation. The food service industry incorporates some of the largest and most profitable businesses in the world. When analyzing research data, make sure that there are more positive indicators than negatives before locating a food service concept in the particular community.